Oh, everyone, and welcome. Oh, hoi, everyone, and welcome aboard. I'll be your Captain Hillian today, along with. Peace and might, Lieutenant Drakir, at your service. And hello, Marco. Nope. Hey, Marco. Uh, let's see, I've come to terrorize you with my Nokia Street <laughs> 10. Good luck with that. And uh, yeah, welcome to Showcase Sunday number 104, if my count is correct. Uh, did I. Did I put in the right title with this? Give me a second to just click OK again on that. And yeah, for anyone new with this, uh, <clears throat> Showcase Sunday is where we try out some games for about half an hour each. Which might, we might cut it short if it's uh, just not fun or not interesting. And yeah, we'll see if any of these games are good for streaming Oops, at some other time in full. And we're starting yeah. today with Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. Yeah, I played the first one. I not finished it for ended up playing something else in the middle of it. And it accidentally got left behind. <laughs> yeah, that's also a thing with some big uh, RPGs that you get distracted and then, uh, well, <laughs> you forget where you were. Oh, okay. I have still my saves and all that, but uh, uh, I'm just even going to get back into it. Okay. I'm I'm pretty sure this is a standalone expansion. Uh, I probably just picked it up on a sale somewhere, but yeah, uh, let's see. Marco, 104 Great Sundays, yeah. Uh, let's go with this for the moment. Apparently this was added on later. It's a bit odd for a strategy game. Uh, let's go on story difficulty, trial of iron mode, expert mode, uh, level scaling. Let's see. Provides a consistent level of challenge. And let's just go with the critical path only. That's <laughs> now that we'll stray off that in the half hour we will give this game. So let's start the timer. Okay, I will say that I am feeling a tad ill today, so uh, yeah, <laughs> hopefully it won't get worse by the end of today. Same on my end. A world where mortals live, die, and are reborn through the turning of the wheel. The cycle of reincarnation watched over by the gods and made possible through pillars of a mystical substance known as Audra. Five years ago, you traveled from your home to the Deerwood, a nation that had waged war against the incarnated god of light, Aethys, resulting in his destruction. The country suffered from a plague of hollowborn, infants born without souls, that many believed was punishment for killing a god. Yes, they were, Marco. In ancient, secluded ruin, you witnessed a secret ritual that inadvertently transformed you into a Watcher. One who can see and speak with souls. The ritual also gave you horrible visions. Waking nightmares of a past life that threatened your sanity. To put them to rest, you pursued the man who had led the ritual. A seemingly immortal agent of the gods, known as Theos Ix Arcanon. With divine assistance, you confronted and defeated Theos, ending your visions and resolving the Hollowborn Crisis. In so doing, you also learned the great secret that Theos had protected that the ancient empire of Anguith had transformed themselves into gods. I'm guessing this is all a summary of the base game <laughs> story. You retired yeah. to the castle of Cad Nua, built atop a massive statue of pure Audra, where you ruled in relative peace and prosperity. Now, none of this sounds familiar to me, so this could just be an original thing. And let's be honest, if we ever do play Pillars of Eternity, the base game will have forgotten all of story. this. 
You fixing up that old keep? Lifting the curse? <laughs> Must have told it a hundred times. But something got to nod at me. Thinking the spirits there weren't really at rest. But maybe the gods weren't finished with us. Yeah, those look like. Yep. I used to dream that when my god came back, he would forgive us. Last the trouble with dreams. Sooner or later, we all have to wake up. Well, great. <laughs> One spared or one overlooked? So and so you wake to a sleepless world, the in-between of life and death. Follow your memories. You have been here before. Oh, so was I the only one getting you feelings from a... Uh, uh, you are a watcher now, and a watcher you will stay. A watcher sees souls, knows their pasts, and the souls see them back. Yeah, I, I don't think I was the only one getting a cabin in the woods feels at, <laughs> at, at the end there, with the hand there. <laughs> a little bit. Since that movie ends with the big what fucking hands popping out into the ground. A higher power, a rewarder of good deeds and punisher of the wicked. The gods aren't real, but something else entirely. Something created by people. Hmm. See, Marco, I know this VA from somewhere just can't remember. that these were things you were never meant to understand? That their comprehension is beyond you? Yeah, it's a good movie, Marco. Let it's a... Uh, Let them decide what to do. It's basically a... It's basically a smart horror movie disguised as a stupid one. Come. And yeah, otherwise you can just look up some videos on it. An aged dwarf shares this strange floating platform with you. His face is creased by so many wrinkles that his features lie buried amid shadowy pockets of skin. Still, the dwarf's well-practiced habits have left telltale tracks of a welcoming rictus across his visage. You can see his smile coming before it blooms, reshaping the dwarf's face from a hanging sack of flesh into something resembling an oddly carved merry gourd, replete with unhealthy bumps and discolored splotches. Now, scary movie is more parody. Oh, we can actually talk to you. The creases of the dwarf's face tighten into a smile as he gives you yeah, a Not that he wants to. Okay. <laughs> and hello there. Sit. Please. Yeah, the dwarf followed. Thank you for joining us, Watcher of Cat Nua. The gaunt woman seated at the table is clad in time-worn black armor that seems too massive for her to move in. A pale, slender neck rises from the gorget, topped by a hollow face. The milky skin stretched across it is delicate and translucent, like parchment that has been scraped clean too many times. She's preoccupied with the arrangement of cards on the table between you. With each movement, her armor squeaks and groans as though bearing an incredible weight. 
she places a final card, gives a nod of satisfaction, and raises her eyes to meet yours. Your brush with the divine has drained you of your powers, fractured your memories. Look upon these cards. They represent the courses of your life. You alone know best how they flowed. Arrange them to fit what you remember. Okay. <laughs> this is a good way of uh, put it, bleh, working into character creation. Basically, you got zapped by God and got a full reset. Let's see. Uh, select when history took place during Pillars of Eternity or select the Pillar of Eternity. And okay, that's all of that was from Pillars of Eternity 1, I'm presuming then. Okay. Yeah, that would make sense. And because I remember from what I've seen of Pillars of Eternity 2, if it is the correct game that I'm remembering and not just one that looks very similar, uh, that starts off really different. So, yeah, I'm guessing this is the technically true sequel to the first game or something. Yeah, it is called it Pillars of Eternity 2, after all. <laughs> and yeah, not dead fire after it, but that's, this game actually continues the story from there, whereas Pillars of Eternity 2 is its own thing, maybe? Let's see. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Let's go with this. Does everything appear to be in order? Good. Welcome to the beyond. I am Bera. One half, anyway. She points a finger in the direction of the dwarf who led you here. Though the movement is slight, her gauntlet squeaks like a rusty hinge. The dwarf's rictus returns as he nods in the woman's direction. Tell me, do you remember when we last met? Let's see. She places a card on the table, showing a tall tower. The gods' constellations are arrayed around it in the sky. You remember now, the Hall of Stars in Twin Elms, where you spoke with the gods. You came to that tower seeking our aid. Let's see, Marco, narrator's voice is soothing. Yeah, it's supposed to be soothing, since you're going to be hearing it throughout the entire game, I presume. I'm guessing the cards are connected to us. Yes, this is kind of like New Vegas, where Doc asks you about your family history and what you did through your life. Yeah, but only with the freaking god. Wait, I feel like we did this already. You chose to pledge your services to other gods. Still, a pledge unmade stands fairer in this court than a pledge broken. She places a card in the middle of the arrangement. A bell tower with no bell. Her fingertips slowly drag away from the card, faintly creaking as they retreat across the table. You had need of the gods once before. Now it seems we have need of you. The being that occupied Odnua's statue beneath your castle was the dead god, Aethys. Of this, we are certain. What we do not know is what his intentions are. God of Rebirth, Redemption, Dawn, Spring, and Light. Okay, <laughs> he's not as nice as his uh, titles or his uh, subjects make you know, it sound. Or concepts, whatever. <coughs> Marco, yes, I remember correctly. I witnessed this uh, like it was yesterday. Okay, you've seen someone play this game then. Though Aethys stole a large fragment of your soul, you were strong enough to survive the onslaught and enter the in-between. You and he are still connected. He has chosen a body made of living Atra, perfused with the power of thousands of souls, including yours. It should be little difficulty for an experienced Watcher to find him. No, but neither is your body truly alive. Your lungs draw breath, your heart pumps blood, but your flesh is as soulless as a hollowborn. That is, until I return you. Yeah, motherfucker stealing souls. She delicately places a card upright on the table. The art depicts souls flowing out of a pillar of Audra. Let's see. Well, I'd like to find him as much as you want. He destroyed my castle and killed who knows how many people around it. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Yeah. I know. It is my business to know. 
322 in Katnua and your surrounding lands. Yep. Hey, yeah. Hey, see, my tongue is getting even thicker when I'm sick. Uh, hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, Pika, you doing good today? Hello, Pika. Let's see. No, I saw you play this before. I, like we, in the last showcase, we played a game similar to this, uh, Pathfinder, Their but souls not this. Still. You have the power to save them. Serve me, and I will return you to your body. Or don't, and return to the wheel. Okay, I'm guessing this will just be a game over. <laughs> Good. Before you return to Aora as my herald, you must remember who you were. The last whisper of life in death. For a moment, the sockets of her eyes darken, leaving the pits of a death's head gazing out at you. Let's see, Pika. It's nice and cold here. I'm so comfy. Uh, hi, Pika. Good morning, Marco. I wasn't uh, here last Showcase Sunday, though. When you can picture your hmm. own face, the beyond will lead you back to your own kind, to the world of mortals. Okay. Oh, character creation. Import. Or start from scratch. Let's look around the imports. Well, it's... last Sunday we were not online uh, in the afternoon, of course, Killian was away. <laughs> Yeah, though that wouldn't have been a uh, that wouldn't have been a showcase stream, anyways. Let's go with Conan here. <laughs> Let's see, barbarian <laughs> culture weapon proficiency. Okay. Uh, next, 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 next. A lot of <laughs> a lot of fun things we can go, look through, of course, if we want to. Go forth now, Watcher, as my herald. Know that I do not give you this title lightly. When the time comes, you will have the power to reveal the souls that cling to you. To open the gateway from the in-between to the waking world. That was in the afternoon, Pika. Find Aethys. Learn his plans. When I have cause to talk to you, I will summon you. With a quick gesture of her hand, you feel a sharp pain in what would be your chest. The pain continues, intruding deeper into your soul. Looking down, you see a small lump of darkness roiling within you. The darkness lingers there, but the pain abates and fades entirely within the span of a few seconds. Okay, I probably should have hovered over her name whenever it showed up, because I think we're actually dealing with the goddess of death here. A chime. Do not fear, Harold. It will not harm you unless you choose to cross me. I trust it will not come to that. Her gauntleted hand gestures to the dwarf, hovering nearby. The dwarf nods, contorts his face with his odd smile, and gestures to a new door. Uh, let's see, yeah, I stole it in for even that evening for shenanigans, sounds like fun, it was hilarious, the man keeps holding dead bodies, sounds like something I would do IRL, he randomly threw a pixie at me. <laughs> yeah, she's talking about uh, the Baldur's Gate streams with uh, her, Kisuke, and Alst. And yeah, just for the fun of it, I've been, I've been stockpiling corpses and just tossing them around wherever. Okay. I very much doubt that I'll be able to do that in this game, but yeah. Uh, okay, we still have eight minutes left on this. I don't know. People loved it. The, uh, music it was very really good homage to the old Baldur Gates games. Yeah. The old ones. Hello, what have we here? Can't interact with them. And yeah, that's what I thought. The return to your body feels like waking after a fitful drunken sleep. The rocking of the ship sends pain jolting through your limbs. Crashing waves hammer inside your skull. Adair watches over your body with a glazed look, taking long, even tokes from his pipe. At the first movement of your chest, he starts. His gasp, mid-puff, sends him coughing and straining for breath. <laughs> 
Uh, let's see. <laughs> Pika, we heard a thought and then suddenly Pixie. So <laughs> where did you get a Pixie? Uh, from the Necromancer's hidden lab. Uh, let's see. Marco, I'm stuck yeah. here like it's Groundhog Day. I'm hyper. Uh, cold weather makes me happy. Okay, most people don't like it. Oh, there's no way. You're awake. I don't like cold weather. What are you doing awake? How are you feeling? <laughs> Life's a big improvement. I hate to cast a pall over your recovery, but I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. Okay, we might be a bit more dead still than we think we are. The voice echoes from inside the bust. The remains of the steward of Cad Nua. Cad Nua has been destroyed. Aethus possessed the statue of Maros Nua and rose from the ground, consuming the souls of all nearby. It is only by the exceptional strength of your soul that you survived. And even then, oh just barely. The further Aethus withdrew, the weaker you became. We chartered this ship and followed him to the Deadfire Archipelago. Okay, so that's that's why the, that's where the subtitle comes from. I know how, like now. but it seems he has retained a piece of your soul. And proximity to it has brought you back. Okay, that's that's going to make things awkward since it means that we actively need to hunt him down and stay close. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, we'll light back out. Just a moment. You know all that. It's just gonna... You've been faking on us. He pokes at your shoulder with one finger. <coughs> Misfortunes brewing topside. We. Migrants, fires, the captain one, two, there you go. An older man with ale sour breath rubs his bloodshot eyes and stares at you. Yeah, let's see, Pika. Oops, I'll rejoin when I get home. Got blast. Okay, see you. See you soon, Pika. And Marco, my mother uh, just gave me a box of cookies like she did yesterday. My father hit his thumb with a hammer again, same as yesterday. And my brother is gonna come back from work now. And if it's like that, I'm stuck in some sort of time loop. <laughs> okay. And Grim, the smell of drink on your breath could wake the very dead. <laughs> now, what's this about? Okay, I did not expect a statue to be that sassy. Pirates. They're demanding parley with you, Captain. I know this is asking a lot, but you better arm yourself and get on deck. Should be some gear in there. He indicates a nearby wardrobe. Okay, typically they just attack. And, well, parley only if uh, things are already going badly. Okay. All Grab right. all of that. Now make some use of it. Okay, automatically gets opened. Yeah, always good to have it, the tutorials that you can view, but aren't forced through. Let's see, 1624, 2230. Oh, we can have two sets, huh? Come on, there and there. Let's see, what is the big yeah, difference then? Penetration, penetration, chance to hit. Okay, 19 accuracy, 19 ac attack time, yep. Okay, they take the same amount of time to act and such, but the great sword deals more damage. Okay, but this one has more crit damage. Okay, put that on. And what is this? A prepared meal. Okay. Who can only make some resting? The pirates of Deadfire are notorious. I suggest you deal with them quickly. Okay. Lost and alone in the storm. Yep, now the narration stops with the extra bits. The surly, brutish looking captain stands uh, stiff backed before his crew. He scowls as he assesses you, his hair whipping about his ears in the wind. Uh, his crew of one. Now, if you don't mind. <laughs> and especially if you do. Well, at least he asked. <laughs> I am a gentleman of fortune. The captain shrugs in a sheeting rain uh, before pinning you with a slow, murderous grin. Give her up easy, and I'll see you get a swift death. It'll be bloody <laughs> and agonizing, sure. Well, at least it'll be quick. 
<laughs> okay, this storm's pretty loud. Did you say you're surrendering? How strange. And then he's going to wear his breeches on his head and dance for us? Did I hear that right? <laughs> Aye, but the breeches are gonna be stitched from your skin. You got a smart mouth on ya. Careful. That'll get you killed faster than any blade. Listen up, mates. He cracks his neck as he, discres he addresses his crew of one. I'm off to spear me a bigger fish. One with sharper teeth like. I'm trusting you lot not to cock this up. Don't damage the sloop when you take it. Play with the crew if you'd like. But don't bring me any prisoners. None that are alive. Yeah, prisoners kind of have to be alive to be prisoners. You had been with that is a few more. Okay, let's see. Combat introduction. Presuming we just click an attack, and then pause to unpause, spacebar to unpause. Okay. And there we go. Storm's picking up. Take cover. We're going to wash ashore, aren't we? You've defeated the pirates, but you're not out of trouble yet. The storm picks up, lashing your ship and driving you dangerously close to a rocky shore. The Defiance crew hurries to reduce sail and batten down the hatches. They work quickly, but the ship is still listing heavily. Okay. Just then, a loose crate tumbles towards you, gathering speed on the rain slick deck. It misses you, but knocks uh, Chikupnepek, one of your deckhands, off his feet. Oh, that's an odd symbol on there. Defiant heaves. Chitupak uh, uh, pitches over the side. He grabs onto the rail, but his fingers are slipping. He cries out for help. Meanwhile, the runaway crate totters on the edge of the deck, ready to plunge overboard. You recognize the symbol on the front and realize it likely contains the salvage from Kadna, Kadnea, Nua, your keep. Okay. So this is how it, uh, the game does uh, moral cutscene bits and such. Yeah, let's rescue him. We can always find that again later sometime. With luck. You grab Chutupak's arm as just as his finger grip fails. For a tense moment, he hangs suspended over the rolling sea. Then, with a mighty tug, you pull him back onto the deck. You hear a heavy splash. The crate uh, is gone. Chutupak, meanwhile, nods in gratitude and hurries to his station. Meanwhile, the storm has nearly driven you ashore. A flash of lightning reveals a treacherous coastline and Eothas striding into the distance. The lookout barely has time to shout a warning before the Defiant runs aground. The impact holds you from the deck and into the froth of waves, bodies and splintering debris. You struggle toward the beach just ahead, even as the surf tugs, at, you know, tugs you toward the open sea. You kick and paddle with all your might until at last you feel sand between your fingers. Pulling yourself ashore, you collapse. Okay, <laughs> not completely what I thought I'd be, but <laughs> close enough. It's... It, that ship is going to need a lot of repairing. Uh, you've been getting a lot of sleep so far on this trip. I'd have woke you, but you look so peaceful with your face in the sand. <laughs> I like this guy, but at the same time, I don't. <laughs> yeah, he's an ass. Uh, but yeah, we've hit the time mark, so let's just get through this for a bit. Uh, oh, even the blasted statue got here. Okay, uh, choose the single class or multi-class for this companion. This choice cannot be changed. Okay. That, that's interesting. It, you, you, could give, you could get quite a bit of uh, variety in your party with the same characters then. If you can choose their classes. Okay. Yeah, that's the first game done, so let's move on to the second. Yeah, the intro which... of this game took quite a ta long time. Yeah, for this <laughs> I'll have to turn off the display capture for a bit, because for some reason this does not want to work with the borderless yeah, way. Uh, let's see, Marco, it's true, I'm stuck in his... Oh, wait, there. okay, it does work. Okay. Yeah, for some reason, this game didn't really like to get forced into this resolution, as you can see over here. 
but this game is supposed to be in 16 by 9 resolution, so just forcing it into a bigger version shouldn't have this effect for some reason. But yeah, it's Pixel Gladiator. Uh, let's see, Marco, it's true, I'm stuck in a, some, in, a, in a sort of time loop, my brother just came home, so now I know it's the truth. <laughs> Shipwrecked you are, I like either. Uh, yeah, I know nothing about this game, but I'm presuming it's a bit of an arcadey game. So, let's see, main game mode, your goal is to earn as much money as possible till death. Spend money is not counted, the results are recorded in the leaderboard, the number of waves is endless. Uh, Desert Arena, 10 plus 10 waves, one boss. Okay, Cruise of Rocket Boots is recommended. Uh, yeah, I very much, I get the feeling this is not going to be a game we'll be streaming. I think I've seen this game recommended to me on YouTube, but I never watched it. Well, I was only looking for another video to watch. <clears throat> okay, we can hold down to shoot. And yeah, this is just uh, an arcade -y, uh, this is just an arcade if mm, base defender like. Possibly. Oh, those burgers are good. And yes, I ate some burgers today to, to the stream. Instead of sausages. <laughs> it's. Okay, is the enemy supposed to be coming? Oh, okay. We need to start that manually. Okay, what is this going to be about then? Nice music, at least. Okay, yeah. The ac you can see that the accuracy of the cursor is somewhat off. I noticed that it was... Uh, yeah, for some reason it acts rather weird when it's forced into this size. Like, you can, uh, you can see it at the bottom right as well. There's those... I'm, suppo I'm guessing those are supposed to be, yeah, item slots or something. But they're not fully yeah. on screen. So, yeah. It's, uh, and, yeah, I think we can already say that, uh, yeah, this is not... This, this is probably going to be fun for some people, but it's not going to be of much interest to us, I'd say. Yeah. Uh, especially when it's <laughs> when there's sounds happening, but they're not actually things happening. Okay. Oh uh, well. <coughs> Next game, which is also a pixel game. Let's see. Marco is a form of tower defense. This game has no story, it's just for time wasting, yeah. And with this game, I think there is story, but I think it's procedurally generated. I think I've tried this one before, or maybe even... I get the feeling I've shown this on Showcase before, but caught it really quick on it or something, or just skipped it over because it was obviously not a thing to do, but, well, since we're going with less skipping this time let's just let's uh, see i'm unsure because we've seen it in the patch note on the side for all of, uh, of this year okay let's see what do you think about per <laughs> Perasia? <laughs> uh, let's see fascinating and intriguing assortment of inhabitants roam the land what well, is the most recent event that happened in the land? A great war to the populace, a plague that killed many innocents. A very rare comment. Okay. Bradla. Yeah, I think I've started up this game at least once before, and I don't think it gave these specific... Okay. Okay, like there's, there's a lot of randomization in the world generation as well, it seems. Let's go with that. A lot of updates since last time you uh, tried this uh, you, on your own. Could be, yeah. Uh, let's see. You remember your father? He was a brave captain. David Phelps, Falcon Blade, extra starting pirate, lazy alcoholic known as Hork the Flatulent, <laughs> a cowardly sailor who had better name Boris. Let's get a, a weapon. <laughs> Is this how you look? Uh, it looks a bit like Zoro. 
<laughs> with with one R. Let's see. Your mission is to defeat the four legendary pirates: Peter Sunday, Gottfried Zwaltholm, uh, yep, Aaron Swartz, and Tim Bern uh, Berners Lee. Only then can you call yourself the Pirate King. <laughs> The two names, first they were actually really Swedish. Peter Sund and. Yeah, Svartholm. I forgot the first name there already. Let's see. Tutorial. Okay. Let's see. Captain and crew controls. Your captain has a yellow C over his head. By left clicking, you can give him basic movement and attack orders. The uh, crew are set in different groups. Selectable using the arrow keys. Okay, left click to order the mech captain around, right click to order the active group around. Okay, spacebar opens and closes the pause menu, F1 opens the torch, okay. And the last bit is cut off. Okay. Yeah. Do you consider the patch news on the own side? I do suspect this game is still actively being developed. And yeah. Updated. Let's see. Would be nice to have a bit of a tutorial, an active tutorial to tell you what the hell is going on, but oh well. Uh, let's see. Interacting with Greater Fool. Hey, do you want to become super rich? I got these tickets that will become very valuable in the future. Would you like to buy some of them? Uh, no. Okay, we could buy some, but and we have 200 gold, but no. Uh, let's see. Pirate or piracy missionary. Ahoy! Pirate King is fighting a good fight. Please contribute to the cause of keeping the seas safe and send some rum to our beloved king. <laughs> rum drifting requires an intense amount of rum daily. Without rum, monsters will start appearing from the sea. Okay. Uh, the Wait, contribute what? button will open external websites. <laughs> this game is just one piece. Sort of. Let's see, I know far too many things, maybe there is something I could tell you, but do you think it would be something you would want to know? What I might know is very dangerous, let's see. Yes, I know something, there is a suicide island near somewhere, and I've heard the rumors that if you defeat at least one legendary pirate and perform, uh, you will go to hell. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. Nothing to interact the with them. Let's just get on the boat and see what the hell happens. I think I've, I think I remember seeing that this game is very highly reviewed. But uh, get on the freaking boat, you. There we go. Well, that's probably because uh, it has quite a, it is quite a strong fan base of its own. So yeah, I, if I were to play this game, I definitely would need to uh, let's see, get at least some of sort of guide on how the hell to work with this. Let's see. By hitting the spacebar, you bring up the general main screen, click on world map, select the destination, and the map will plot out a course. Okay. World map. Let's see. Neutral pirates. Pirates island. Okay. Let's head there then. Uh, yeah, sail to destination. Okay, and... Is this actually sailing now, or... Okay, there is movement. I'm guessing this is just a... Yeah, there's a chance for random encounters, I'm guessing. Okay. Oop. <laughs> Big shark. Uh, yeah, this wouldn't be a game to stream, I think. What is... Oh yeah, Oyster. That is taking damage, but not actually losing health. Okay. Oh. Yeah, this game could probably be fun if you know how to actually play in and everything. But I have no idea, so... We'll see how this goes. Uh, what's with the campfire? Yeah, like, I can see YouTubers play this. It has some fun commentary, but for our Arr, style, no. this one does not fit. Yeah. Arr, 
Okay. And collect the treasure Eat. by... In Hmm. Hmm. I was wondering if was already the next game as well. Yeah. Okay. Exit game. Oh, oh double click. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's <clears throat> weird. Yeah, probably for more uh, making sure you don't accidentally exit without saving, I guess. Okay, for this one... Uh, actually, I can leave up. Uh, let me turn off the display capture because this one is 4x3. So it should catch on any second now. Oh, there. Come on, there we go. Damn it. <laughs> Okay, I, I right-clicked I right the game there to see if there was a... Uh, no, if the, the audio was just not playing. Let's try that again. Yep. And yes, it is Planescape Torment, Marco. Yeah, in Planescape port of uh, Match of the Gathering? Uh, no. There we go. Now with the sound... Hey. Yeah, this is the Enhanced Edition. I was told that this was part of Magic Gathering, but all right. Yeah, it's, it's part of Dungeons & Dragons. What is it? It's okay. Not Magic the Gathering. I guess for two we was a bit confused due to the name. Um. Mortuary work before the invention of the wheel. Yeah, very PlayStation 1 looking. <laughs> and yeah, Planescape okay. Torment Enhanced Edition. Also, I, I just I just gotta like that... Uh, instead of like the normal stuff like new game and options, you have Alter Senses, New Life and The Abyss to exit the game. <laughs> oh dear. Uh I should have thought it was more like related to D&D for uh, that similar middle looks like one of the other D&D games uh, si have a, a similar face with details. Not exactly, but similar. Uh, this is a this is a D&D game though. I, I pro actually, I probably could have put on the uh, display the four x three display capture because it did miss the uh, the but the. Yeah. The front bit where it did say that it's a Dungeons and Dragons game. Yeah, yeah let's make a new life. It's kind of curious. First time I heard there is a right? Looks DD like. And I thought, alright, it is a DD game. Then hear people say, no, no, it's a Magic the Gather game. Says it's Planescape. I thought, uh, okay. And now you tell me it is a DD game after all. Uh, yeah, I, d oh, I don't know heck. enough about uh, Magic the Gathering to say whether, how they would make that connection, but it's, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it <laughs> really did say just Dungeons and Dragons, but like, I, I know, I know the, yeah, place, this Planescape setting is <laughs> set in D&D because you can actually travel there with certain worlds, I believe. Yeah. As the straight people got confused since they said Planescape here and there are plain walkers in Magic the Gathering, so. Hey, Chief. You okay? Yeah. You playing corpse or you putting the blinds on the dusties? I thought you were a deader for sure. Who are you? 
Oh, who am I? How about you start? Who are you? Let's see. I don't remember. No, I can't remember. You can't remember your name? <laughs> well, next time you spend the night in this burg, go easy on the uh, on the bub. Named Morte. I'm trapped in here too. Trapped? Yeah, since you hadn't had time to get your legs uh, yet, here's the chance. I've tried all the doors and this room is locked tighter than a chastity belt. <laughs> We're locked in... Where? What is this place? It's called the Mortuary. It's a big black structure with all the architectural charm of a pregnant spider. <laughs> okay, I'm liking this guy. <laughs> Mortuary? What? Am I dead? That's from where I'm standing. You got scars aplenty, though. Looks like some burk uh, painted you with a knife. All the more reason to give this place the loft before whoever carved you up comes back to finish the job. Scars? How bad are they? Well, the carvings on your chest aren't too bad, but the ones on your back? Morte pauses. Say, looks like you got a whole tattoo gallery on your back, Chief. Spells out something. Tattoos on my back? What do they say? <laughs> looks like you came with directions, Morte clears his throat. Let's see, it starts with... I know you feel like you've been drinking a few kegs of stigwash, but you need to center yourself. Among your possessions is a journal that'll shed some light on the dark on, uh, of the matter. Barod can fill you in on the rest of the chant, if he is not in the uh, dead book already. Farad? Does it say anything else? Yeah, there's a bit more. What it pauses. Let's see, it goes on. Don't lose the journal or we, uh, or we be up the sticks again. And whatever you do, do not tell anyone who you are or what happens, you know, happens to you. Or they'll put you on a quick pilgrimage to the crematorium. Do what I tell you, read the journal, and then find Farad. No wonder my back hurts. There's a dime novel written there. As for this journal I'm supposed to have with me, was there one with me when I was lying here? While I was lying here? Hey there, pizza. Uh, let's see. This reminds me of the first Fallout. It is very similar in the style, at least, yeah? Of isometric uh, RPGs. Uh, hey, pizza. Da, da, da. Okay, am I just never? <laughs> I am just never coming back here again. Uh, don't antagonize. Yeah, don't antagonize the pizza, Marco. Mm. Yeah, we love pizza lover. Let's see. No, you were stripped to the skins when you arrived here. Besides, look like you've got enough of a journal penned on your body. What about Farah? Do you know him? Nobody I know, but then again, I don't know many people. Still, some burgs got to know where to find Farad's. Uh, once we get out of here, that is. How do we get out of here? Well, all the doors are locked, so we'll need the key. Chances are one of the walking corpses in this room has it. Walking corpses? Yeah, the mortuary keepers are used dead bodies as cheap labor. The corpses are dumb as stones, but they're harmless and won't attack you unless you attack first. Let's see, is there some other way? I don't think I want to kill them just for a key. What, you think it's going to hurt their feelings? They're dead. But if you want a bright side to this, if you kill them, at least they'll have a rest before their keepers raise them up to work again. Well, all right, I'll take one of them down and get the key. Well, before you do that, arm yourself first. I think there's a scalpel on one of the shelves around here. Let's see, search the shelves in the room for a weapon to attack the zombies with. When you find one, go to the inventory. And to arm yourself if you wish to examine any items, right click. Alright, I'll look for one. One last thing. Those corpses are as slow as molasses, but getting punched by one of them is like being kissed by a battering ram. If they start getting an edge on you, remember you can run. And they can't. Use it to keep some distance if you need to recover. Okay, hold down the shift key, left click. Okay, if you're in danger of dying, use running to keep your distance. Okay, alright, thanks for the advice. Uh, let's see, quick loot, formations, uh, okay, that's pointing these out here, okay. Alright. Pause, unpause, select weapon, okay, select spell, select item, special ability, okay. And start dialogue with a party member. And we start off with Morte, who is <laughs> just a floating skull. <laughs> Let's see, oh, priest scroll, it, it, journal... Is, am I only one getting a bizarre version of uh, Monkey Island from this? Um, yep, <laughs> maybe. Though I very much think this, this is not going to play out as uh, some bandages. 
This isn't going to play out as a point and click, even though we'll be doing plenty of pointing and clicking. Right, there's the scalpel. Oh, and here comes Morte. All right, you found the scalpel. Now get to, uh, now get uh, good, good. now go get those corpses. And don't worry, I'll stay back and provide valuable tactical advice. Maybe you could help me, Morte. I will be helping you. Good advice is hard to come by. All right then. Let's see. Although you can attack by selecting a weapon from the quick menu, pressing the A button also tackle. Okay. Need to get closer. Or, no, I just need to click at their feet. There we go. Okay, now how do we loot that? Or do we need to get the one who actually has the key? There. No bandages. Let's see, anything on this? Yeah, I've, I've heard plenty about this game, like how it is just a masterpiece. But I've never actually played it myself. Yeah. Is this the remastered, or did they not make another one that's a bit more free or something? Yeah, this is the enhanced edition. Okay, another one had a key. So where is the bloody door then? Up here, I'm guessing. Why am I thinking about the one that's a sequel to this one? I don't know if this game even had a sequel. Okay, where is the door? Up uh, here. <laughs> the freaking gates. I thought those were prison cells at first. Let's see, door is locked, you need a key. Uh let's see. Quick weapon, quiver, quick item. Uh, let's see. The head of this bronze key has been twisted around itself several times. Now it resembles, yeah, so that it resembles a screw. If Morte is to be believed, it unlocks one of the doors in the preparation room. When using keys in torment, you only need to have them in your inventory to unlock a door. In some cases, the key will vanish after it's used. This is done when the key is no longer needed and frees up inventory slots. Okay. So we can okay, actually so get it out of there. So it's the okay. wrong key. There we go. There we go. We're just trying for the wrong door. Some advice, Chief. I'd keep it quiet from here on. No need to put any more corpses in the dead book than necessary. Especially the femmes. Plus, killing them might draw the caretakers here. Yeah, let's see. I don't think you mentioned it before. Who are these caretakers? They call themselves the Dustmen. You can't miss them. They have an obsession with black and uh, rigor mortars off the face. They're an adult bunch of ghoulish death worshippers. They believe everybody should die sooner better than later. I'm confused. Why did these dustmen care if I escape? Weren't you listening? I said the dusties believe everyone's got to die sooner better than later. You think the corpses you've seen are happier in the dead book than out of it? Where do they all come from? Death visits the plains every day, Chief. These shamblers are all that's left of the poor sods who sold their bodies to the caretakers after death. Uh, before you said something, I didn't kill any female corpses? Why? Are you serious? Look, Chief, these dead, <laughs> these dead shits are the last chance for a couple of hard bashers like us. We need to be chivalrous. Chivalr no hacking them up for keys, no lopping their limbs off, things like that. Last chance? What are you talking about? Chief, they're dead, we're dead, see where I'm going? Eh? <laughs> no, no, actually don't. Is it necrophilia if it's between corpses? Uh. Chief, we already got an opening line with these limping ladies. We've all died at least once. We'll have something to talk about. They'll appreciate men with our kind of death experience. Wait, didn't you say before that I'm not dead? Well, all right, you might not be dead, but I am. And from where I'm standing, I wouldn't mind sharing a coffin with some of these fine sinewy cadavers I see here. Morte starts clacking his teeth as if in anticipation. Of course, the caretakers would have that had to part with them first, and that's not likely. 
Okay. Uh, look, it's obvious you are still a little addled after your kiss with death, so I've got two bits of advice for you. One, if you've got questions, ask me, all right? To speak with a party member, it's like the talk option, and then the click the party member you wish to speak to. All right, if I have any questions, I'll ask you. Second, if you're half as forgetful as you seem to be, start writing stuff down whenever you, you come across something that might be important. Jot it down so you don't forget. If I had that journal I was supposed to have with me, I'd do that. Start a new one then, Chief. No loss. There's plenty of parchment and ink around here to last you. Hmm. All right. Couldn't hurt. I'll make a new one then. You used to keep track of your movements. If you ever start getting you know, to get cloudy on important things, like you were, uh, like who you are, or more importantly, who I am, use it to refresh your memory. <laughs> All right, I got it. Let's go. Updated my journal. Okay, yeah, I, I can see why people like Morte. <laughs> He's just a chatterbox. And not a, an annoying one. Yes, yeah, so can we just exit through? No? Yep. I don't think I recall anyone doing a bad talking skull trope. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> it's... Okay, hmm? it seems I forgot to change the category today. Let's fix that now. I'll have to fix that after the stream is done as well. That's a big fucking book. Holy! Who are you? Described, the described looks very old. His skin is wrinkled and has a slight trace of yellow, like old parchment. Charcoal gray eyes lie within, you know, within an angular face, with a large white beard, uh, and, a, and a large white beard flows down the front of his robes like a waterfall. His breathing is ragged and irregular, but even his occasional coughing does not slow the scratching of his uh, quill pen. Greetings. Boatsy, what are you doing? I was going to speak with this scribe. He might know something about who I, how I got here. Look, rattling your uh, bone box with Dusty should be the last thing. Before Mordek can finish his rant, the scribe begins coughing violently. After a moment or two, the coughing spell dies down and the scribe's breathing resumes its ragged weeds. And we especially shouldn't be swapping the chant uh, with sick dusties. Come on, let's leave. The quicker we uh, give this place the laugh, the bet. Before Morte can finish, the scribe's gray eyes flicker to you. The weight of years hangs heavy upon me, restless one. He places down his quill. But I do not count, uh, yet count deafness among my ailments. Restless one, you know me. Know you? I... There's a trace of bitterness in the scribe's voice as he speaks. I have never known you, Restless One, no more than you have known yourself. He is silent for a moment, for you have forgotten, have you not? Who are you? <laughs> as always, the question, and the wrong question, as always. He bows slightly, but the movement suddenly sends him into a bout of coughing. I... He pauses for a moment, catching his breath. I am Dahl. Perhaps you can answer some questions for me, Dahl? Updated my journal. <clears throat> Very well. What do you wish to know? How did I get here? Null snorts in contempt, as if he finds the memory repugnant. Your moldy chariot ferried you to the, uh, the mortuary, restless one. You would think you were royalty based on the number of loyal subjects that lay stinking and festering upon the cart that carried you. I arrived here on a cart? Updated my journal. Yes, your body was somewhere in the middle of the heap, sharing its fluids with the rest of the mountain of corpses. Dull breaks into another violent bit of coughing, finally catching his breath minutes later. Your seneschal, Farad, was as always pleased to accept a few moldy coppers to dump a lot of you at the mortuary gate. Who is this Farad? He is a collector of the dead. Dull draws a ragged breath and continues. We have such people in our city that scavenge the bodies of those that have walked the path of true death and bring them to us so they may <clears throat> so they may be interred properly. Where can I find this Farad? If events persist as they have, Restless One, you will have a much greater chance of Farad finding you and bringing you to us again before you find whatever ooze puddle he wallows in this time. Okay. <coughs> Nevertheless, I must find him. A slight warning creeps into Dahl's tone. Do not seek out Farad, Restless One. I am certain that it will simply come full circle again. With you none the wiser and Farad a few coppers richer. Accept death, Restless One. Do not perpetuate your circle of misery. Okay, there's some, definitely something going on here. I have to find him. Do you know where Updated he is? My journal. 
The hall is silent for a moment. When he finally speaks, he seems to do so reluctantly. I do not know under which gutterstone Farad layers at this moment, but I imagine he can be found somewhere beyond the mortuary gates in the hive. Perhaps someone there will know where you can find him. <clears throat> can you tell me more about the mortuary? This is where the dead are brought to be interned or, crema uh, in interred or cremated. It is our responsibility as dustmen to care for the dead, those who have left this shadow of life and walked the path of true death. Thal's voice drops in concern. Your wounds must have extracted a heavy toll if, the, uh, if you do not recognize this place. This is almost your home. Shadow of true death? True death is non-existence, a state devoid of reason, of sensation, of passion. Dal coughs and gives a ragged breath. A state of purity. <coughs> Hello, no Lazarus. Uh, let's see. See, I was about to say, huh, Baldur's Gate, but this isn't Baldur's Gate, is it? <laughs> also, hi. Yeah, th this is uh, <laughs> this is Planescape Torment, the enhanced edition that is, has come up during the showcase. And how are you doing today? But, well, I hope. Yeah, I hope. Also, at least better than him. Yeah, at least better than I was this morning. Hmm. <clears throat> Uh, let's see, we have eight minutes left on this. Sounds like oblivion. Why would anyone want that? It is worse than remaining in this shadow of what life once was. I think not. Uh, let's see. Let's see, I have some other questions. Uh, what do you do here? <clears throat> I am a scribe, a cataloger of all the shells that come to the mortuary. Dol coughs again, then takes a deep breath. As long as the stream of corpses flows you know, through the mortuary, I shall remain at my post. Very well. Farewell, Dahl. As you turn to leave, Dahl speaks. Know this. I do not envy you, restless one. To be reborn as you would be you know, a curse that I you know, could not bear. You must come to terms with it. At some point, your path will return you here. Dahl coughs, the sound rattling in his throat. It is the way of all you know, things flesh and bone. Then perhaps we will meet again, Dahl. Okay. <coughs> mm. uh, let's see, last verse. All oh, right, never did uh, get around to playing that, but it used the same engine as Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. Yeah, I do think so, yeah? Uh, hope health is treating you well, will treat you well ASAP. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing better than I was this morning, but it's still uh, being annoying, as you can tell by all the coughing. Yeah, I, I have... I mean, I mean, thick in the throat, but I haven't had too much coffee, like I had one or two. But I have been, I have a bit of a nausea uh, uh, at some point, and even were close to vomit. Yeah, coughing does suck, yeah. Nothing in here. Three. Yep. Uh, well, yeah. Hello there, Rom. Sound. Hello, Rom. <laughs> Hello. Also, I have my helmet from. Yeah. Card. <laughs> Let me take care of that for a second. Uh, we might as see. well leave it on just in case to protect his uh, valuable head. <laughs> oh, too late. Uh, I remember. I remember reading about this game. It's long. Yeah, but also supposed to be really good. I mean, yeah, I know it's it's really good, but the thing is, it's also incredibly long. Yeah, oh. an incredibly varied game, since you can, yeah. there, I believe there's like dozens of paths you can end up going with this. Oh, yeah, that, so, I was tempted to say we could have this one as a series, but it would depend mean, how long it is. I mean, we Very could have long. It as a, I mean, we could have it as a series, but it'd be like a really right. long one. Yeah, so it probably will be the rule. Like, we haven't done this idea yet, but a quote unquote EU season style. Mm, I, I think this game might be. This game and some other big RPGs who would be better for a <clears throat> YouTube series where they can be edited down to cut out a lot of uh, dead weight. Uh. It's a bit of a fitting term since we're in a freaking mortuary. Doesn't look like there's anything up here that we can make use of. And yeah, Morte advised us not to get caught. 
so let's just try and avoid these people as much as we can. Let's see, container is locked. More bandages. It's getting so freaking many of those. Cloth charm? Okay. Great. We can make a mummy. Mortuary task. Dustman and bombing charm. Lesser. Okay. Uh, let's see. Hi, Ram. Uh, as I understand it, playing same torment, uh, torment is immense. Yeah, certainly similar in size to games like Baldur's Gate, which are huge. Yeah, <laughs> made by the same yeah. people, I believe, as well. And one of those uh, few games that required multiple CDs to play. Okay, where the bloody heck is the exit of this place? Maximum 64 hours and minimum 33. Yeah, since we wouldn't know how where to go and all, that would be quite a bit uh, higher than just the minimum. Wait, for like the I'm getting hours. stuck just trying to get around here. Okay, let's see. For the three hours, if you use your sleep for two hours, so... 17 at streams at the absolute minimum. Yeah, so they have done a stream with, uh, there was almost 20 episodes or something. Uh, Dave the Diver, which was exactly 20. Yeah, so... Then this could maybe to be doable, but that will be more in case... As, depending on if you'll be able to stay on track with the main quest. Yeah. <laughs> Probably need a guide to figure out what the hell to even do with everything. Yeah. So. And not get lost like I am already. Yeah, so... Not possible to stream this then but yeah it could become a very big one yeah, it looks like we need to go upstairs though i didn't see where to get out up here uh, all right that must be the incinerator i'm guessing so we probably don't want to run into that I mean, you could also always just walk in and try to respawn. Okay, anything over here? There's something here. And there's the little side chamber with a bunch of zombies and a skeleton. Uh, here, maybe? Door is locked. Okay, I'm presuming the other one is also locked. Hmm. And yeah, I don't see I don't see an exit here. Let's see. From Marco. Hillian, have you ever heard of the tactic saving than risking it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I didn't know there was a name for that. Saves coming. Wait, that's counter saves coming. Uh, I'm not even sure if we can walk into it because there's no. Uh, you know, let's see. The air roaring from the mouth of this immense furnace is incredibly hot. Walking even a few steps past the archway would certainly cause your ha hair and flesh to uh, burst into flame. Okay. <laughs> they keep trying to. <laughs> speak to us but we keep walking away uh but yeah i let's call it on this one here not because it's a bad game but because i just can't find where the fuck to go which well yeah. can be a bit of a problem with all the games as well <laughs> if you're I planning just... on... oh, sorry, what? One? sorry i was gonna say if you're planning on continuing this you might want to get a a guide yeah, yeah. like over 20 streams is doable. It's not like it's not like they would worry about having to do 50 streams. But it's not impossible, but yeah, definitely a guide. Yeah. So it's a maybe for now. Uh, yeah, next game is Planetary Annihilation. And whenever I start up this game, it says that there's a new build available, but it never freaking updates. So, yeah. 
Uh, let's see. I believe... Uh, I believe this game is technically considered to be a sort of spiritual sequel to another game we may have tried at one point. Um, um. But I forget its name. It's, it's the one where you where you control that giant freaking mech and build bases to make units and take out other mech, giant mechs of the sort. I don't think uh, we should. Let's see, but I think I played one of it like that as a kid. Okay, we have time for at least one more after this. <clears throat> What's for welcome, welcome, Commander? Commander. Oh, wait, yeah, you, you're right. Let's see. Welcome, Commander. Click next to learn how to use the command and control interface. Yeah. Control. Okay. okay. And to reorientate the planet north up. Okay. And oh, that must be the other commander. Uh, let's see. Left click on the blue commander icon to select it. Once your commander is selected, right click to issue a move order. Move your commander toward the enemy base. Destroy the enemy commander and its base. Okay. Yeah, I don't remember the game's name. I don't remember you were able to maybe a massive ships, robot tanks. And whenever you sunk a ship or something, you could salvage it from more materials to build more things. I think that might be uh, from the depths. I don't think it was called that, but it was really old. Okay, probably not that. I, yeah. I, I was a kid. And the annihilation of all enemy commanders wins the game. Actually, yeah, this was way before flat screens. So yeah, that should tell you how old the uh, uh, game I'm thinking about. Uh, it must be full Steam even. But you have the CD, you installed it, then played it. Let's see, we needed left click the alt fire button. What is the alt fire button? Uh, ping. Where, why is the alt uh, here? Alt fire. Okay, that didn't really do much, it seems. Okay. Um. <laughs> that set everything on fire. Okay. Yep. Continue tutorial, okay. Yeah, I, I know... I know the cover art of the uh, game I'm thinking of, but I completely f forgot how its name what it was called. Something with commander in the name or something. Yeah, it must be something like that. Uh, left click fight to initiate uh, landing on the star system. After the enemy is defeated, left click explore to gain a new technology. Okay. Just look on and conquer. I can't say that much. Yeah. Like Galactic Commander or something like that? Yeah, a, a Robo Commander? No, not a Robo, not that simple. Okay, pick a location inside one of the green zones. Okay. Uh, zoom in, pan through a green landing zone, left click, left click, start annihilation, okay. Mm. Please do not die. Uh, what? Let's see. Two resources to run a war. Any is used to run fabricators, factories, radar, and some weapons. Every fabrication unit and factory will require metal and energy to construct units and stru uh, units and structures. Okay. Metal extractor. Okay. Up there. Mm -hmm. As it is complete, observe the, any, the economy UI at the top of the screen and, incre uh, the, and the increase in metal income. Yep, metal produced, metal expanded. See, okay. Marco. And I've got something to say. Skill is. Marco, are you trying to pick a fight with everyone today? Energy plants, left click anywhere on a valid ground location. Okay, these can be anywhere. 
Mm-hmm. Factory. factory can put that right in the middle. Left click on the tank icon to issue a build order to the factory. Okay. Factories will queue build orders in order you know, in the order they are given. Shift left click to queue up to five units at a time. Right click on a uh, unit icon to remove it from the queue. Issue a stop order will to clear the build queue and stop all construction. Okay, let's build a bunch then. Yep, holding down shifts adds to the task with this. Okay. And where is that other commander then? And you get produced pretty fast. Okay. That should spawn set them to run towards that place. As they spawn, I hope. Uh, wait. Come on, get to work. And yeah, they are off now. Wait, this but yeah, the, the, yeah, the goal with this game is just grand, uh, grand strategy combat against the, well, the AI or other players. I don't know if it actually has a campaign or not. Oh, no, yeah. I can see... Oh, I think I know, I know it, it, it's inspired in homage to just... Good God, it was so long ago. Yeah, somewhere in the zeros, I believe. I think it might be just before the zeros. Like, try 98, 99. Where is the other... Where's the enemy faction? It's oh, probably no, somewhere yeah. on this side of the planet. Uh, and for people wondering how I played it, I don't know how what the enemy is. We borrowed it from a friend. A friend <laughs> I'm not talking to in ages, and I doubt they have... I will not be... Actually, maybe they still have the game. So, actually, I don't know which of my friends had it actually now. There we go. Okay. Attack move. And of course, these little tanks are not going to do much against the commander. Okay. Everyone, attack move here. There and there. All of you produce extra still. Let's see. Wars are never lost by having too much metal. When you think you have enough metal, build more. When you think you have enough energy, build more. Well, build one factory when you can build 20. But yeah, this game would be pretty fun if you have people who were, are into this sort of game. But uh, me, I, ju I would just get immediately lost with all the micromanaging. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it's starting off simple at the moment, of course. But uh, yeah, we're going. you're going to be able to jump to other planets eventually. And I think I remember something either with this game or the one it is a homage slash spiritual successor to is that uh, you can also just turn some planets into weapons themselves Ooh. just Ooh. put a bunch of rockets on and uh, <laughs> go, ka go kamikaze with an entire moon okay not the same game there but the uh, other game before talk about you but you did have a map but you did not you did not recognize the entire planets like this. Okay. Oh, advanced blueprint library. This technology unlocks advanced units and structures. Okay. Jump. Okay, I guess there might be somewhat of a story outside of the tutorial. Though, I, hmm, we, we'd have to see. 
I don't think it had really does have a story or anything. Let's see. Uh, pick one location inside one of the green zones. Uh, I'm not... Up. There's only one, apparently. Start Annihilation. Let's see. Metal Extractor. Click and drag a circle around... Okay, to initiate an area build. Okay. Uh, let's see. Left click on the Metal Extractor. Okay. All right, that that is pretty cool. Okay, shift build Q build order shift left and uh, yeah left click and drag a line of three energy plants on some open lands. Okay. What the heck? Yeah, now I feel like you and me talk about different games, but actually maybe I played the first one and then you may have seen a sequel to that one, which involved entire planets. Maybe. Let's see. Vehicles, slow, heavily armored units that tend to have a singular purpose. Bots, quick and lightly armored units that tend to be used for multiple purposes. Aircraft, highly mobile, but expensive flyer units that are susceptible to enemy anti-air. Okay. Each of them have their own... Yeah, each of them have their own factory. Bot factory, vehicle factory, and air factory. Okay. One, two, and three. For the fabrication unit from the factory, Q5 attack units. Okay. Let's see. Fabrication, basic fabricator, builds basic structures, durable. Okay. Oh. All right. So that's going to help with awesome. building. This one, uh, uh, Rob? Yeah. Are you up for LA Noir later today? I'm on this, but it's kind of not feeling great. Woke up, my throat's hurting, and I want to sneeze real bad. But if I do feel better, I'll let you guys know. Okay. All right. Also, uh, weird but random thing is that, and I may just, for the fuck of it, uh, add in animation for third person for Left for Dead. Okay. The thing, you, the thing that I, um, yeah, that's the list of mods. Okay. Uh, they're slightly better, you know. And also, if you still find any other mods, let me know. Okay. Uh, where is that fabricate? There it is. Later. Oops. See ya. And be, be well. Be safe. Make it well. See you guys do. Have a good night. Okay. Let's go. Oh, right. One thing I also forgot. I think, uh. You said fucking months ago, it might have been a year, a year ago, that you got really sick of playing, uh, one of the Ghost Recon games. I don't remember which one. I think one of those New York. It was one of the New York games. I think, I think those games are meant to be played with actual people rather than AI. Yeah. Like, the game is really freaking easy if you play it with the boss because they can just line up impossible shots. Let's yeah. see. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh. I don't know, I guess I can figure... Which one was it? Was it a... Hang on, let me look. Because there's like a bunch of different fucking... Uh, Wildlands and Breakpoint were the last two, with Breakpoint being uh, not well liked. Okay, so we can set these to build continuously. Currently, it's been very positive on recent reviews, but all reviews are mixed. With yeah, I get it. Yeah, Breakpoint and Wildlands are those games that actually feel like they like you that you do need other people to play with them. Yeah. What? What is? Is that a transport ship or something? Uh. But yeah, I I think we get the gist of it. This would be fun with uh, friends who are also into this sort of thing, but uh, yeah, not for streaming or at least not for uh, story streaming or such. Since well, I don't think this has story streaming or story, but uh, to stream. 
Anyways, I'll see you guys later. <laughs> see ya. See ya, Roman, be safe. Thanks. Okay. Hmm. As but, I said yeah. earlier, during the period when everyone is getting sick. Yeah. Okay, I think this game doesn't need uh, explanation. Uh oh. The moment it gets picked up. Uh oh. Uh, come on. Okay, why oh, is it not? No. Why is it not showing? Oh no. If I change this over. I think people can tell just by the freaking sound of it. I, okay, this worked earlier. Why the hell is it not working now? Um, what is going on with this? Okay, apparently the game capture is refusing to work. So let's go to a fallback then. And Dude. yeah, this is uh, this, this is me turning the display capture on because for some reason oh. the game capture is refusing to work now all of a sudden. And yeah, this this is going to be one bi big thing that is going to be useful between the game capture and display capture is that even if your game just does not want to hook in for some reason, uh, it will get caught on the display capture. And yeah, what is that to say about? Transfers of zombies that hasn't already been said <laughs> dozens of times. Uh, yeah, that refuse. Uh, oh, wait, no, it. that's nothing. Seriously, why is it refusing to work now? All of a sudden. Let me see. Window capture. Will that work on it? Maybe. Okay, I, I do not get why it's just refusing to work now. All of a sudden, during testing, it worked. Uh, but yeah, I guess we'll have to do it like this. Then. And these these bars on the sides, not that the cursor is showing, but unless I have, have it... Oh, it doesn't even show on the... Okay, that's a bit odd. Uh, let me turn something on then with this. Display capture. Capture cursor. Okay. There we go. But no reason... Okay, with most games it has shown the cursor so far, so I don't know why it's... Ref doesn't with this game specifically but uh yeah these bars on the sides these are for i have to sing i have on the background picture on the background that i'm using which is just a black ground a black background i have white lines to outline where the games should be showing to make sure that i don't put anything on screen that isn't there and the middle lines here are for the four by three size games Alright. Well, yeah, let's start this game. And start the timer. And, yeah, we'll just have to work with it like this for now. I, I do not get why it just refuses to work now all of a sudden. Well, yeah, for this game, I could just... I could just make a smaller... <clears throat> ...propped version of the display capture. Because, yeah, I'll be stuck with this size of the screen, because it's either this or full screen mode. And, yeah, what what is there to say about plants versus zombies? You plant plants, you gather sun, and you kill zombies. Simple concept, but with all the different types of zombies and plants that you eventually get, it becomes a bit more complicated and strategic with everything. The, the only one I ever watched this was one of the newer freed ones that, where you actually take control and run around with them. Yeah, Garden Warfare. Yeah, I watched that one bit and I asked what, what the heck. <laughs> Slightly exactly. funny, but then I got distracted by anything else. But I know you played it. Well, it's yeah, one me. video on YouTube, that's it. Now, I have one of them, uh, Garden Warfare 2, which actually I think has better... <laughs> actually plays better than some of the modern Call of Duty games. But one thing that you have with that game is that similar to Titanfall 2, there are some people who have played that game for literal years, so you're likely to just get your ass handed to you over and over again. And yeah, the Sunflower, along with the Pea Shooter, is basically the mascots of this game. 
we plant those and we get extra sun from them. So yeah, these are our energy pylons. <coughs> yeah, the more sunflowers you have, the faster you can grow plants. Most people plant two rows of sunflowers and then put uh, their fighting flowers before them. So let's just continue planting some sunflowers. There. Okay, I'm a bit iffy on if to stream this game or not, because it does really start, it starts rather slow like this to ease you into it, which is very good game design, but it's, well, a bit boring if you're playing this game again. <clears throat> does this, this first one have a story? Uh, sort of. It's more comedy than anything else, but still a story is a story. So... Are we looking like uh, in a almost style of? Uh... Oh no, I'm playing out there. We just finished the damn game. <laughs> done to no, not life goes on. Done to death. There we go. Uh, I guess you could say a bit less dark on the humor, but still uh, a bit darker than you'd usually see. Okay, one more, and yeah, over down here we have a progress bar, or at least a bar that shows. Uh, yeah, there. It will disappear after a time. <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> Brains. The brain legion. But yeah, I'll definitely have to. Uh, I'll definitely have to fix up a source that actually catches the game. Because I really do not get why it's not capturing with one of these game captures. Very bombed, of course. And, seems so. and yeah, there's also just puns with this everywhere. But yeah, blows up all zombies in the area. What it means with that is a three by three area. But yeah, they are pricey, and now we had a new zombie, the one with the cone on their heads. Uh, yeah, stuff like that means that they have more health that we need to whittle down. So let's just get as much sun as we can. I don't really know if there's really a randomization with them spawning sun... Yeah, there's definitely randomization with the random sun coming down. But don't know if there is with the sunflowers or not. Okay. I guess for a cone head an insult, or is that something else? Yeah, uh, it counts as a. Yeah, I think that's when that is used as an insult. It's referring to people who had the uh, dunce cap you know, put on them <laughs> in school in the past. All right. Okay. Yeah. The the only real sad thing I can say about not really this game, but this franchise is that they basically ruined it or no, maybe not ruined it, but they they got greedy with the second one on because that, yeah, just microtransaction bullshit start to front. Oh, come on. Yeah. <clears throat> like, I get games with like Guild Wars 2 have a a uh, nope shop where you can get cosmetic and such so i'm sure if that count as a i think that, that might be more like a cash shop than a might have trash action hmm. a bit unsure i think that's just a difference of terminology yeah probably difference of terminology but i get some things like the mmos mmos do that you can use this cash shop to buy things which the money goes to develop for expansion or pay for the service and such. Yeah. But other games where you have microtransactions for, like, why do they have microtransaction in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, a single player game? Like, I don't yeah. get that. 
uh, pay to win bullshit or pay to uh, progress faster or pay pay to skip i think that is called most often yeah which yeah the, the problem with that is that typically to put in stuff like that usually means that they kneecap the actual progression like the, they're trying to force yeah. you to get stuff like that because they're making it difficult for you to well m make progress in the game without uh, using those yeah i bought recently this guy yeah and you, i got because i bought it on the first day i got bonus oil weapons because i'm fine with for it those weapons were only there to help you train skills faster and have an easier start that's it and all the deal, things you can buy to it are purely cosmetic as far as i know mm. let's see the walnuts blocks off zombies and protects your other plants this death <laughs> the walnut is basically going to see action in every single map after in this game and it's basically a staple okay. of the entire franchise yeah but yeah i'll be uh, yeah like sometimes it's fun you have something you can buy something a bit cosmetic and such but again if you make a same play game uh, you need and you encourage to buy things to be to progress faster like like if it's a bloody mobile game yeah then you're doing it wrong yeah if a game is offering boosters for experience or gold or whatever the hell that's typically a bad sign like i know guild wars 2 has those but that's mm, i think that's more forgivable because you also get a lot of stuff free from the daily stuff and such or the, yeah then again daily login stuff is also often frowned on because it's uh, it tries to get people addicted to the game by well getting them to interact with it each day yeah i don't mind just looking in a shorty to grab the lookout or do some short dailies but that's it yeah and they recently changed it a little bit there one row and yeah you can see how this will escalate with uh, how they'll bring in different kinds of zombies as they go and you get more flowers to counteract and uh, defend against certain types and then there's also the fact that there are three regions so to speak like we're in the front yard at the moment we will also get access to the backyard, and eventually the fight will even go to the damn roof. Where certain flowers will work, and others not. Okay. I've overlooked the fact that that was a cone head. What? Me? What? Yep, hey. he's eating the walnuts. <laughs> The world not seem okay with it. Yeah, less and less so <laughs> as his health goes down. Yep, that was a wrong place. Oh well. Or not, not an optimal place, better said. Okay, let's put some walnuts down. Okay, that one will be dealt with. But yeah, in general, this game is just a, a chill little fun game. I would, mm, I would describe the feel of it a bit like uh, Dave the Diver on a lower flame, perhaps. Oh, bloody heck, now I remember some Guild Wars 2 jokes. Mm hmm? Uh, people used to joke that around the Silvar is starting soon and he was plant with the zombies. Silvar was a prison, basically. Yeah. Okay, I think this should be enough. Uh Plants come with recharge times, so you can't spam them. And at least you can't spam the really strong ones like the walnuts and the cherry bombs and such. Okay, huge wave. Uh oh. That's not that bad, it's just them uh, passing by and waving as they go. But yeah, each level uh, will end with a final wave. Yeah, just a silly, fun game this is. And yeah, Pop Cap is still around, I believe. Yep. 
It's just that, uh, yeah, after this one, they managed to damage their reputation quite a bit. Like, I think the, the Garden Warfare games are still well played quite a bit. It's just that, uh, yeah, they, they should probably go make Plants vs. Zombies 3 or an actual one. I think, I, I'm not sure if there's a one already on mobile or not, but if they should... Mm, I'm not really sure if you could even remake this game, like maybe remaster it and re-release -re or just make an updated version or something. Let's see, let's dig up a plant that take uh, to make room for another plant. Greetings, yeah. neighbor. The name's Crazy Dave. But you can just call me Crazy Dave. <laughs> Listen, I've got a surprise for you. But first, I'll need you to clean air, clear your lawn. Use the shovel and dig up those plants. <laughs> Let the digging demands. <laughs> Uh, yeah, just a little tutorial on how to remove plants you may have misplaced. Okay, goody. Now for the surprise. We're going bowling. <laughs> Here, take this walnut. Why'd I put a walnut in your hand? Because <laughs> I'm crazy. Now go, bowl me a winner. And yeah, sometimes the game will just throw these mini games at you. What we do with it is, well, we bowl with walnuts. <laughs> and yeah, you can hit others, but yeah, you, we'd need to get, let them get close for that first. Also, these lawnmowers at the end here are basically a safeguard. Like, if the zombies reach the end of the screen, then it's game over, but these will will wipe out a row at least once, if that happens. But if another one gets close uh, after the, 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 that lane has been cleared, bye-bye. Okay. Can I can I yeah, can I get an explosive nuts? And then another row coming in. Okay, come on, give me an explosive one. Almost got the last one there as well. Okay, let's lead that. Yeah, let's let this one get a bit closer. Uh, let's see, <laughs> Jim <Jungle> Kenobi. <laughs> Hello, we've not seen you in a while, I think. Yes, we're the one. Hello, Kenobi. Uh, let's see, Plants vs. Zombies is okay, but I like Peggle and Bejeweled the best. <laughs> okay. Never heard of. Uh, those are two. Uh, uh, those are two mobile games that are played a lot. And yeah, hello there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hello there. And yeah, most of these levels we get a new plant at the end. Also, Bloom and Doom Seed Co. It's a bit hard to read, but like this. But yeah. Potato Mine explodes on contact, but takes time to arm itself. Another little save one. And <clears throat> yep, new one. New zombie with the pole vaults. Oh yeah, yeah. How are uh, you doing, uh, Kenobi? Yeah, how are you doing, Kenobi? And let's see. How much <laughs> time do we have? About fifteen minutes remaining. Okay. <laughs> again, just on the timer, eight minutes. It, it seems like every time I look there, it's just eight minutes again this, today. So let's see. And let's not do that. Actually, let's do this instead, so the <laughs> potato mine gets a showcase. Yeah, potato mines are nice for a little early game. Let's see, just chilling, doing a boring old raid clearing. Wow, 
Okay. Hopefully it's all done. Okay, I think there is a bit of a randomization in where the zombies appear in the first. Probably should put them forwards a bit so I can actually put the, <clears throat> the pea shooters behind them. Okay, once the arm comes off, they're basically done. That one's done. Uh, give me some sun. There. Now that one is dealt with. Okay. Do we just keep expanding our sun income? Put down more of these wherever we can. And I do believe potato mines and basically all explosives are instant kills. There. Um... Yeah, let's dig you up, put you there, just because they're going to, there's going to be raves now. Uh, Wait, what? Raves? Waves. <laughs> oh, waves, all right, all right. Okay, yep, pole vaulter. And what they do can be easily guessed. They'll... They'll storm forwards and jump over the first plant they run into, which would typically be your walnuts. Here comes another one. So yeah, as you go, you will have these uh, special zombies that pop up to try and circumvent your defenses and such. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. How many peas? <laughs> there. Oh, this remote that's keep you used to make. Pipe guns loaded dead with the. Uh, but does it pipe with our rubber glove uh, finger? They just shoot a dried out pea at people. <laughs> I thought you were going for a potato gun. We done that before, but they. It was a bit of a waste of potato. <laughs> and hello, our first variant. Snow pea. Shoots frozen peas that damage and slow the enemy. Yep. <laughs> We're getting debuffs. Okay. Nothing too new. Okay. And, yeah, so this will continue with the game. We have a limited selection of plants that we can bring in, but we can expand that later on. All right. And, yeah, we can also get... Upgrades for plants. That we just uh, turn one type of. Uh, yep, that we just turn uh, one type of plant into an upgraded version. Oh dear. I just realized. We had a lot of. news and maybes today. A hesitant maybes. Yeah. Well, that's the risk with this. this. It is. Yeah, not com no, it's not entirely random, but it is very random with the games we pick up. So there's a good chance that some days we'll just have uh, stinkers. Yeah. And the may the big maybes are, of course, the games that are... Lo like, 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 they are good. They probably be fun to steam. Probably is how long it will take. Yeah. Like... Day the Diary was fine being long, for it worked well for that system, for it was kept being fun. But other games, it could become an issue. Like, I, yeah, I, I do want to stream some games like uh, Persona 5 Royal at some time, but that, 
that's just going to be entire projects that are going to last probably months to get through. And e yeah. even that's with a guide to help speed things up. Yeah. I could see us play the, the games like the Pillars Return game, but again, guide, save with Realms of Torment. Yeah. Of, uh, yeah, it was a Realms of Torment. Uh, Planescape Realms of Torment. Like, yeah, plane, uh, the Planescape, so uh, Planescape Torment. Planescape Torment, thank you. Thank you. Uh, like, 33 hours sounds good, but that is the minimum. And we probably will go over that. Yeah. Okay, just keep building up. And yeah, I can see how this play game would probably get boring sooner or later. But let's also use one of these. Yeah, as you see, it does slow them down. This is was moment of a... Uh, that's a story more of a... Uh, time wisdom? Yeah, I wouldn't say that. Okay, then was just going to jump over the potato mine. But yeah, mostly this game is just meant to be a fun little relaxed game. That, that, that's the one, thank you. I was looking for one of those uh, terms. I was about the relaxed game. There. Okay. Uh. Okay, yeah, this will work. He will set off the potato mine because the front line also just blocks the ones behind them. And yeah, just a few more hits. Yep. Okay, just enough hits. <laughs> Oop, bit of sun disappeared there. There, there. Okay. And yeah, you can see how this can quite quickly go from just a single lane to a full <laughs> five lane war. Yeah, holy. And this is just the basic plants. Okay. And even just start expanding our defense. Because sooner or later, it, uh, just walnuts isn't going to cut it. Because, well, <laughs> just freaking jumpers will go over them. And yeah, as you saw, the plants that aren't walnuts do have, do go down quite quickly. Yeah, go so really quickly. Oh yeah, that is because they're meant to be offense. You could also just delay the zombies a bit by putting, you know, putting something cheap up front, like the sunflowers. Actually, just let's start just filling the, the place up. And yeah, the timer went off, but let's let this level finish before we end it. And yeah, I think we can call it then. Bit, yeah, a bit early, but not much time to start another anyway. Yeah, better five minutes early than uh, 50 minutes late. Yeah, this is a look in the past. Hilton, yeah, game being unexpectedly not allowing you to log out and save until much later. And there we go, another plant. Oh, I know what you mean for this one. Yep. Feed me, Seymour! <laughs> Feed me! It's Chomper. Devours a zombie hole, but is vulnerable while chewing. Okay. <clears throat> oh, another new one. And yet, since we now have more uh, now since we now have more plants than we have spaces for, we get to choose. So I would typically advise to well. 
sunflowers are basically required. I think there are people who have played through this game without sunflowers as a challenge. But yeah, you want at least... You, know, you probably want the sunflowers, at least one offensive, one defensive. And then I believe the cherry bomb and other explosive ones, or instantly explosive ones, are called... Uh, uh, I forget the term, but it's basically as a a save measure. Like if a place of in your defense is getting overrun and such. But yeah, we'll leave it at that. So let's head to the main menu. Quit. And yeah, let me turn that off. Yep. There, and hand on over here. Okay, let's see. Uh, Lashris, God, it's been so long since I last saw the original Plants vs. Zombies. Popcap Pop, yeah, Pop Games really was capable of making games that are the equivalent of premium crack cocaine, weren't they? Yeah, but it's... Uh, actually, I don't know what... Beyond Plants yeah, Plants vs. Zombies, I don't actually know what other games or series they might have made that were as effective as the original Plants vs. Zombies. Like, every sequel or mobile sequel version... Uh, of Plants vs. Zombies that they made basically bombed, I believe. <laughs> Bejeweled and Peggle, I said. Yep. Okay, so they made those as well. All right. Like I, I, I don't give a, I don't care about those games in the absolute slightest, and get more annoyed whenever I see yet another version of like Connect Four in a row stuff and such. Uh, you misspoke there in a very interesting way. Uh, what did you hear then? Because. Half the time it's been shown that it's not always me misspeaking, but you mishearing. You said Bejeweled and Pegolas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't even know what Pegol is. Let me just do a quick look on that before yeah, we go find someone to rate. Pegolas sounds like a pun on Legolas. That is obvious. And I could see you accidentally saying that when being tired. But right, this, yeah, but this looks like breakouts. Or okay, I'm very obviously missing something from just seeing still images. But yeah, this yeah, this looks either like I'll take a look I'll look more into that later, but hmm. Okay, that, there are some of these old old games that I do like, like breakouts and such, or hmm. I, what what would be classified as? Uh, nowadays you find like dozens upon dozens of mobile copies just with a different skin. Like every time Marvel brings out another mobile game, it's like uh, it's it's uh, this game but with a Marvel skin, which I just find a, a complete waste of time. Let's see, yeah, Pegola uh, Reverse we Pinball. They are remaking old games for mobile, which kind of makes sense. But they're almost True. overdoing it to a point and try to add market transaction to it. It just makes it worse. But I think you heard the, what was it, the Google Game Store or something is the worst as there are many obviously illegally made games there. Yeah, just, just look up Spider-Man and you'll find like 20 knockoff games with not even well-made names or anything like that. <clears throat> But yeah, I'll take a look at this Peggle to see just what the hell it is, just to f see, just to sate my curiosity about it. I'm not sure if I'd even play it. Uh, but yeah, let's see. Uh, who to raid? We have Sour Walrus, who is playing Voices of the Void. Can't say I've heard of that. It sounds horror game-ish. Let's see, <laughs> muted. Uh, okay, is this a, is this an ad or something else? Because I'm just seeing a bunch of numbers. Uh, Okay. Uh, I think I seen this and I gave up on it quickly. Oh wait, wait, it's an It's a puzzle that they're working on at the no, moment. It's a mini game in another game. It's a game where you try to listen for aliens from outer space. Oh yeah, this one. Okay. It's basic yeah, basically a game where the ambience is more about freaking you out than anything else. And if when something does happen, it's a uh, extremely rare i believe uh, actually i think this is a newer one that it actually more things will happen in this one for the is a sequel or spiritual sequel to the older one for this one is a is actually new okay <clears throat> i do know 
I do know that it's supposed to have some survival elements, like if you don't eat or drink or sleep for too long, you start seeing hallucinations and such. Uh, but yeah, let's move on. We have Swalbe, who is playing Darkwood again. Very fitting. Chubbis the Moon Seal, still with Dark Souls. Redacted Cat with Turok 2, Seeds of Evil. I thought they finished that. Apparently not. Isaiah Rosier is playing Psychonauts. And Puffle is streaming The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Time. Or not Oracle of Time. <laughs> I was thinking about the Game, game Boy games. Uh, or Karina of Time. Kiri Natsuyoko is playing Mass Effect. Karenai is playing Fey Farm. Let's take a look. It seems that this is their first look as well. And of course, we get a freaking ad. Uh, always. Hmm? It has been the same ads in a row. Yeah. Like, I don't know if uh, Twitch does personalized ads or something like that, but yeah, for some reason, they really they think I, I really like facial recognition bullshit or such. Whatever. And last but not least, we have Horatius the Dwarf, who is having another psychology open house. There we go. Now we can see them. Okay. Who would you say to raid, or does anyone have any suggestions? Mm. Oh, that is a good question. It has been a while since we raided Sour Walrus. For it wasn't too long we did raid a redacted cat. Yeah, whilst they were still playing Tura. Puffle, though. Puffle, I think somewhat recently-ish. I I really sh I, I started keeping note of the people who raided, but then I forgot to keep track with it. Uh, let's go raid Sarl Rollers then. Or, hmm. Actually, I'm a bit curious about this Fey farm, so let's go raid them. Since they're right. also doing just at the start, we'll also get a good explanation of what the hell actually is happening and such. So, copy the name, add to our place, slash raid and paste. And yeah, before we start that though, thank you everyone who has been watching now or later. Thank you, Lashverse, General Kenobi, Random Marco, and Ram as well for popping in for a visit. And thank you as always, Drakir. You're welcome as always, my friend. Thank you all for joining. And yeah, unless uh, unless my health just suddenly uh, collapses before the evening stream, or if something else comes up, uh, there should be another stream today in about three hours. Yeah. No LA Noirs, so... Count Lucanor or Dark Side Detective? Yeah, one of those two. I, I probably we do a coin flip. No, Count Lucanor is the newest. Probably good idea to give that a little bit of a more or a shot. True, but I am curious also, I think about with Dark Side. We'll go. Something in the chat. I think I saw something in the chat. Uh, we can scroll down in the chat there. Yeah, uh, let's see it. I think I saw, saw the... Kenobi say something. Let's see. Yeah, Kenobi. He says Peggle reverse pinball. Uh, Lashris, oh. I'm really bad at Peggle, must admit. Uh, wait, is it like one of those drop-down games where you just... Where, uh, like Pachinko or something? Uh, let's see, Lashris, drawing a blank, I'm afraid. Just make sure to look after yourself first, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Without health, there is no streams. Indeed. I usually tell him that he, his health comes first. Yeah, that's in general with uh, basically anyone. If... <laughs> If you are not feeling well and you f would normally do something, but you feel you're not up to it, just take a break. <laughs> because yeah, if you no. push yourself too hard, uh, it's you who is going to break. Yeah, Look, we have done streams where we have been sick, but we usually took it easy when we did. <clears throat> it depended how sick we were. Yeah, and, and I just thought of something warnings. stupid. Yeah, we did give warnings that if we feel our health were decreasing, we call, we'll call it early. Okay, you're, you're going to groan from this one, but uh, <clears throat> in Soviet Russia, break takes you. <laughs> Anyways, with that, let's start up that raid. <laughs> and yeah. Thank you all again for watching, and until next time, have a nice day, and until then. Be safe, everyone, and watch out for undead seagulls.